Wrong. He and they have made it happen. And come what may from here on in, Anfield's beloved German will say goodbye with at least one medal round his neck. The clock kids, the clock kids have won it. What a win! Absolutely huge. And Jurgen Klopp wants to go out with a bang. And they've made the best possible start on their assault before trophies. They hung on with the spirit of the club, the young players, everyone coming together with that support behind the goal. And that man, when we look back at the Jurgen Klopp era, he is right at the forefront. And yes, we'll talk about Klopp's kids. But that was a colossal performance from that man at both ends of the pitch. Oh, special managers do special things, and he is one of the best that the Premier League has ever seen. A monster manager who has a middleweight squad, a bantamweight team out there, but punches like a heavyweight, and it's because of him. Liverpool without compromise, Liverpool when they insist, Liverpool for every taste, rock and roll, heavy metal, rhythm at the expense of the Blues, whom now they have beaten in two of the last three League Cup finals. For Chelsea, the dazed, glazed stare of the vanquished, the emptiness of getting here and leaving with nothing, this might have been the decoration on a season of Chelsea churn, but not this time. And so the Carabao Cup is Liverpool's, and in a few moments from now, those partying Reds will become the first club to collect the League Cup for a tenth time. The winners in extra time by a Virgil van Dijk goal to nil. Peter... Gary, Jamie, thank you. Trophy presentation to come, of course. And that is remarkable, Daniel Sturridge. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. I think, you know, Liverpool gave absolutely everything. So did Chelsea. But Jürgen's going to be absolutely delighted with his players, the young players coming on, doing what they've done as well. Virgil was brilliant and was an amazing finish at the end. Uh, Virgil van Dijk's header was the, the 42nd attempt on goal in that game, Jamie, and the 20th on target. It was a long time coming. Yep. Unbelievable. I mean, if there were... It might not be the most illustrious, illustrious of trophies that Liverpool win, the Jurgen Klopp will win, but I tell you, if there was ever a, a match that summed up Klopp as a manager, this was it. Passion, desire, making his team run through brick walls for him. It was unbelievable. And with all those young players, what a day for them, because he didn't care about bringing them on, giving them an opportunity. Other managers might not want to turn to the young players, but they were magnificent. Absolutely incredible. What a win. And for it was fitting as well, that the goal scorer, because Virgil van Dijk has been one of the Premier League greats. And he was unlucky not with, with, the, with the one actually in, in um, not, you know, in, in main normal time. time. Normal yeah. time. And then, and then to the score that header, it was an incredible one and, and set piece. It was fantastic for Liverpool. I was thinking they're going to play a 2v1. So surely they've got to play a 2v1. They don't. They get it in the box. And then Virgil rises a fantastic header. It was... Uh, for all the youngsters, and James talked about Van Dijk, there are still the senior players that guided those kids through. Yeah, I mean, Kelleher in goal was absolutely fantastic, but Canate for large parts of the game, I know he went off towards the end, was just brilliant, and Virgil van Dijk and Gomez and... Gomez, sorry, and Timakas coming on, they're all senior players, so even though he brought the youngsters on, they could go and express themselves in the final third, and Endo was brilliant. So they had control at the back, but I'm so thrilled for the youngsters, to be honest. It's their moment, their time, and um, they deserved it. Let's hear from the Liverpool captain, the man who got the winning goal, Virgil van Dijk with Emma Saunders. Congratulations! Just watching you look around, take this all in, what does it mean? So much. Um, all the young boys on the pitch. If you see the, the, the extra time, it's incredible. I'm so proud of the team. Uh, intense game for both sides. They had chance, we had chances, and uh, 
Amazing. First trophy as a Liverpool captain. It's all for the fans, so let's enjoy it. You've had some really big moments with this Liverpool side. As you mentioned there, everyone has played their part. But for you, how did it feel to be on the bottom of that pile of players knowing it was you that found the winner? I didn't want to get injured there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, tried to, I tried to get up a little bit quick while I came. Nah, listen, it's, it's emotion, it's, it's, it's everything. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of the boys, you know, and uh, see all the, all the young boys, you know, making their... their, their they're playing that part in what we what we achieved today. It's it's incredible and uh, yeah, on to more. It may not be the last time that you're at Wembley with Liverpool this season, but are you savouring it just in case it is with Jurgen Klopp as your manager? You should always savour the good moments, and uh, this is definitely one of them. And uh, listen, we will never take these things for granted. You know, uh, we are very very blessed. And you see it today as well. Obviously, it could have been the other way as well that we lost, but we did it. We did a job, even with all the problems that we had before games, we had the game, and yeah, it's just, I'm so proud, you know? I'm proud, proud to be part of this club, but especially proud of the boys, you know? They all play their part, so it's, uh, it's all credit to the team. Congratulations to you all. Enjoy Thank lifting that trophy. Well Thank done. You. Thank you very much. When we went to the start of extra time, Daniel, we, we mentioned the young age of the Liverpool eleven at that stage. Average age of 24 with three teenagers in it. Actually, Chelsea's was younger at that stage. They were just 23. But all their players were, were sort of grouped between 20 and 27. So it is that added experience that Liverpool had to guide the kids. Absolutely. I mean, Chelsea, of course, spent a lot of money and, you know, this is a new group of players for them, a new team. And for Liverpool, the young lads coming on, no fear. They've got the senior boys out there to help them, put an arm around them, make sure they know what they're doing tactically, speaking to them throughout the game. And, yeah, they gave everything. Um, Virgil seemed more emotional than I've seen him. It, it seemed as if, it, you know, it means a lot because in the end, you know, it's the manager's last season, it's his first trophy as the captain of Liverpool Football Club. He's proud of the young players and, and you can just see the delight in, in his interview. No, it was like he was saying, not on my watch. Not on my watch are we going to have excuses. Because Liverpool could have gone into this, all the excuses and maybe more pressure with not having Klopp, with all the injuries. You know, they could have had everything. And, and maybe Chelsea might have been favourites going into it because of those injuries. But he made no excuses for his side today. It is a uh, trudge up those steps for those Chelsea players. It will be a much more joyful ascent for the Liverpool players very shortly to guide us through it. Let's go back to Peter. Yes, it is a better ascent to watch as Jurgen Klopp is than to be a part of the ceremony for which Chelsea and Pochettino have no appetite. Here was their standout moment to make a memory of this turbulent campaign and it got away. It's been a Carabao Cup run which has in no small part sustained them this season. It has taken them to the edge, trailing for nearly half an hour to Wimbledon right back in August. Within seconds of quarter-final defeat by Newcastle, they left themselves a semi-final to chase after losing at Middlesbrough. But they chased it in style, they got here, and the final step was just beyond them. So now, spanning nearly six decades, ten appearances, they have lost as many League Cup finals as they've won. And this is three League Cup final defeats in a row. It's now six Wembley final disappointments on the trot. A gut-wrenching new record for them. They've not too much time for regret. They re-engage with the FA Cup in three days' time. A crack at Europe, despite all the turbulence, isn't quite beyond them in the Premier League. There's a lot of reason still for this Chelsea team to get up in the morning. But they lost here. And it stings. Gary, it stings. Oh, it stings. I mean, the thing at the start of the game, that with all Liverpool's injuries, you would think Chelsea could have won. When the Liverpool's kids came on, you think they should have won, but then there was something just holding you back because you couldn't see Jurgen Klopp watching Chelsea go and lift the trophy. That was always the thing I said before the game in the interview. And those Chelsea players will regret that extra time for a long, long time. I thought they played quite well and punched hard in the first 90 minutes and were unlucky. But in the real crux of the game, extra time, where they had Liverpool by the scruff of the neck with those young kids, not having the answer in the last 10 minutes of normal time, they didn't turn up, they didn't perform. And you can't do that 
you cannot do that. It was at half time and extra time that he had to bring them into a huddle and try and rouse them. What was up with them? But credit to Liverpool, they stand at the bottom of the steps ready for that magical walk whilst those Chelsea players take the longest walk in football up those Wembley sweat steps to get the runners up medal. But I'm really disappointed with Chelsea in that extra time period. You can lose any final, you can lose any game of football, but you cannot play like that, you cannot shrink and go back. Particularly when Liverpool had five kids out on the pitch. They had to go for the throat. So he's about to have his moment, perhaps one of two, three, four moments, Jurgen Klopp. And the three-handled trophy will be delivered once more into Liverpool's hands. These are the last buoyant steps on a cup run of thrills. Sommers lies world east against Leicester and West Ham. Nunez on a stormy night in Bournemouth. Gems from Curtis Jones in the quarter-final and the semi-final. Cody Gakpo, a, a thread running through it all. And then today, Van Dijk. No club has had more frequent, sustained ownership of this prize through the years. It has passed through the hands of some great captains, great players. Phil Thompson was first to lift it in these colours. Souness three times the last 40 years ago. Rush and Fowler, Hoopier, Gerrard and Henderson. And now the turn of the serenely indestructible leader of this age, Virgil van Dijk and his boss. Jurgen Klopp's second League Cup to go with Paisley's three and Hunier's two and Fagan and Evans and Dalglish. Oh, look at the energy, the passion, the spirit of Klopp. I can't wait till he leaves. <laughs> I might have a way don't want to get down there. <laughs> to cherish, never to forget. The indestructible smile. He's had some amazing moments here in Klopp. But the pride he must feel watching those players walk past him. Academy kids, you think how young they were when he first came to the club. As I said, towards the end of the game, that man was colossal, Virgil van Dijk. So much of Liverpool's success probably revolves around that sign that Jürgen Klopp made. It is a cheeky, chirpy cue of young men, some of them so young they're pinching themselves. Has this really just happened to me? Did I cross the white line at Wembley Stadium and play as if I belonged, as if I knew? And he's going first. And he will collide either side of the cup with his leader. Golden Sky, the sweet silver song of a lark. And he's winding them up again. And he's milking the moment. And it is a moment of togetherness. Everyone is central. Not least the inspired young goalkeeper. The first prize of springtime is heading home to Anfield. Liverpool for a record tenth time. Liverpool as if by right. Liverpool again. Carabao Cup winners 2024. And that for this stirred, impassioned club. Maybe just the start of it. A ticker tape launch to the great Klopp running. Klopp has the prize that history demanded for him and which he demanded for Liverpool. I mean, great scenes for those young players. Look at them. 
just spoke about how young he would have been when Jürgen Klopp came into the club. And there's no doubt that man has absolutely transformed the club's fortunes from where it was for five or six years before he came in. And I said when it was announced that he was moving on, it's up to these Liverpool players to send him out with a bang. And they've started it well. This week they re-engage with the FA Cup, they're a week and a half from being back in Europe. Manchester City will be turning up on their fixture list before you know it. But for now they are blind to everything but this colour, this cacophony, this party. They've got one, they've got one, and this one cannot be stripped away. No, oh, Shergill Klopp's final lap. <laughs> And he's run that first bend really, really well. He's excited tonight, but he's a workaholic. He's a winner. He'll have them back on the ground tomorrow morning, ready for the champ, ready for the FA Cup on Wednesday, for the game at Notts Forest next week in the Premier League, because he knows that the big, big games are still to come, a lot still to play for. And I have to say, those young players, I love seeing young players do well. And for those young lads, you cannot believe how important this will be in their lives. And they've got a manager who's, like I say, his spirit, his human side, his passion, his fight, he's everything that you would want in a football manager. Surrounded by players who are 20, 19, 18, 17, Jurgen Klopp is bouncing around like a 16-year-old himself, forever young. There's a real joy, isn't there, Jamie Redknapp, in seeing the joy of Klopp and his senior players in, in in what they've done to them. Yeah, absolutely, because they all feel they had to lead the way. Look, look, that's such a great shot. What a man. How do you follow that? How do you follow Jurgen Klopp? If you're trying to come to Liverpool after what he's done and what he's created, it's virtually impossible. It is. The guy is just such a leader of men. He's led a, a city, he's led a, like, every Liverpool fan around the world has looked up to that man and what he's achieved and turned around the club that was, was at the time struggling and made everyone believe in what he's trying to achieve. And even those young players he's given opportunities to, the belief that he's got in all of them, he's just a, an incredible human being. There'll be, uh, there'll be people up and down the country watching this at home in front of their tellies, watching in pubs, Karen Shaw, sure thinking the same thing. You've got 17, 18-year-old lads here who are just taking this all in their straw. I mean, I can't imagine if I was 18 and up there I, how I would react. It's all in a day's work, it looks like, for them. Well, that's the culture that <laughs> he's provided for them. And like I said, he had, the youngsters had the foundation behind them to go and express themselves, go and put the graft in, go and express yourselves. And with that man there, like I said, nothing was happening on his watch. And even when it weren't happening, OK, I'll go and get the set piece and I'll go and get the goal. And I, I'm not a Liverpool fan, but I felt a little bit emotional then watching Jurgen Klopp because I'm sad that he will be leaving, uh, he won't be there, but, you know, we won't see him week in, week out, because like Jamie said, what he's done has been unbelievable, really, and, and, and what a guy as well. And he's also, you know, going around those those squad members who've missed this through injury, Curtis Jones, that he hasn't over the last 20 minutes or so, Daniel, of, of watching him. I don't think he's missed anybody out as he's gone round that squad and the backroom staff. It's a, it's, a, it's a football family, you know, they're all in this together, from the physios to, you know, the players, you've got the fans, of course, who we absolutely love, so all these backroom staff, um, he wants everyone to feel a part of it, and some of those young boys haven't played a lot, so for them it's like, ooh, you know, it's the final, but it's my first time being involved, so for them it is surprising to be there, so he's making sure they feel welcome as well like yo you're part of this like you played your part today the reason why our hands are getting on his trophies is because you gave your all for us so it's a brilliant brilliant victory for him and he trusts his players 
Yeah, those, for those young players to get the opportunities, Kumas, obviously, is a young player, has got a big future ahead of him. McConnell, Dans, Bobby Clark, just magnificent for them. I mean, look at the players that didn't play. Salah, Soboslai, Trent, Nunes, Jota, Curtis Jones, just to name but a few. Oh, and actually, we've seen, we've seen that several times this season, that, you know, he's not afraid of making those substitutions and bringing the young players up. He's not always waiting until they're 3-0 up and a game is, is closed off. We were at Fulham in the semi-finals and they were under the pump a bit towards the end. Bobby Clark came on. He'll, he'll bring them on, whatever the match situation. He will, and we've obviously spoken a lot about Clock there, but it's also recruiting those youngsters to make sure they come through Liverpool's academy, they come through and they're able to go into that first team. So the whole system is just ran so well. It'll be really interesting how they move forward after this. Plenty more reactions come. We'll obviously hear from... Uh, both managers before we are done here at Wembley. Liverpool have their hands on the 2024 Carabao Cup. They've got the selfie stick ready to go. Harvey Elliott is in charge of that. And look at that, they are right in front of their fans. Daniel, this will uh, live long in the memory for those players. Absolutely, man. This is, just gives you the chills when you see the boys stood in front of the fans, basking it all in. And like I said, you know, Jürgen's been an absolutely magnificent manager for Liverpool. And, you know, this is, this is the start. They're going to enjoy this and it's going to be brilliant. Let's uh, just take this in. there did Jürgen and now he's just taking himself off for his own uh, little moment. I'm sure he's emotional. I'm also sure Gary has left the stadium. They went up to lift the trophy, did both manager and captain. They never really, Karen, did they? Just on a, just on a uh, point of the winning goal and also the one that was disallowed, they never really coped with Van Dijk at set pieces today. No, um... It was a bit of a mismatch from the get-go, um, the disallowed one as well. Um, but yeah, I think on that goal that, that was obviously the winner, I think Mudrick coming on, not dealing with that near post, and then the Sassy not dealing with Van Dijk, but he was a constant threat, and he, he has been the whole season. It's not like we haven't known about it, and I'm sure that's why the manager at the end is so, Pochettino is so infuriated with the team, that losing on that set pieces and not staying tight to him and giving up that near post space. The, the, I mean, they tried a couple of things to deal with him, didn't they, really? But, I mean, sometimes you do wonder whether just putting a big man on a big man might help. I know it's a bit old school. I mean, yeah. I'm obviously an attacker, so from the defensive side of things, I'm not the best, you know, personally. But what I will say is they had a warning earlier on in the game. You know, the cross came in and Virgil put it in the back of the net. And, yeah, there was a block there, mm. but... You got to be aware of the guys who are the biggest threat in the box. Well, he gets away from Desarzi as well, and he is a big man, and we just didn't deal with him well enough. And it wasn't incredible movement by Virgil, but he just wanted it more. And that's it was good delivery, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good flat delivery by Simicas, and it was just, you know, it was just, it wanted it. And I think that's sometimes what, it, what happens in set pieces, and you can see that that Chelsea that little bit of fear, perhaps because he'd won so many, and then you just start to panic a little bit, and they couldn't get close enough to Virgil, and he just flicks it in. It's a great header. It's a great header. Uh, let's get more reaction from uh, down there with Emma Saunders. Well, Virgil, you finally have your hands around that trophy. How good did it feel? Amazing. It's an amazing evening, obviously. Uh, 
like I said before, it was very tough, but uh, we got the job done and uh, proud, proud of the team. Cleveland, if you can, just put this into words. Yeah, it's, it's hard to sum up, really, obviously. These are the moments you dream of celebrating with the fans and winning a trophy at Wembley, so it's hard to describe. Well, the 2022 Cup final was quite something for you. Does this top it with that performance out there? Yeah, probably. It's better for the heart anyway, no penalties. So, yeah. No, I think it's obviously another amazing moment for me, so yeah, I'm delighted. A word on this man's performance before we talk about anything else? I'm probably one of his biggest fans, I think. I've always said he's, he's world class. He's, and he stepped up today again. And uh, it's good to see. He's a good boy, good, good goalkeeper. And uh, that's what we need at a club like Liverpool. Talking to us at the final whistle, you were also full of praise for a lot of the younger players that have come in. How have you made that work, not just today, but when the team have been struggling with so many injuries? The thing is, like, obviously, when, they, when, you, when you're young and you get an opportunity, you have, to, you have to grab it with both hands, and obviously it's easier said than done, but the guys did it, and uh, obviously the culture of the club makes them, makes them do it as well, and it's, it's good to see. Uh, but I said it many times before, so it should, it should be just like a start, you know, it, they should really use it as, as, a, as a, to kick on and, and I'm, I'm sure they will, you know, um, obviously players will come back in, in time, but they should just keep pushing, keep trying to get close to, uh, to the team and, and uh, be part of the squad and, you know, to experience this as, as, as a 17, 18, 19 year old only, only benefits you, so let's, let's see. This is it, one trophy in the bag, but still with three technically to fight for. You must have some real belief as a side with regular players still to come back. This could be quite the send off for Jurgen Klopp this season. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. I think we won't get ahead of ourselves, but it's a great start now to give us momentum for the rest of the season, you know, winning this first trophy. Um, like you say, we've players to come back, but the young lads have been brilliant as well. So no, we're in a good place at the moment and just keep it going, I think. With it being Jürgen's last season, does this feel a little bit different here today? Um, not sure. I won't speak too soon, but obviously winning the first trophy is, is the first step, so hopefully we can win a few more as well. What would it mean to go on and win a few more? It's, it's almost impossible. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody done that. So, listen, we, we focus on the game ahead of us, and that's the only thing we can control. And it's very tight, for example, in the Premier League, it's going to be difficult again in the FA Cup now. Three days to recover, uh, two days to recover and play in Southampton on Wednesday. So, listen, we'll see. Uh, what we have to do is go out there and enjoy it and try to stay fit because that's quite uh, important as well. And, um, like the talks about obviously being Jurgen Klopp's last season, it's not within the squad. You know, it's obviously from the outside world. We all have the same goals and doesn't change. So, didn't change today either. But obviously, to experience this, knowing that obviously the end of the season is always a good thing. So, we'll, uh, we'll see. Talks there about the importance of really staying fit, being professional. That's what makes him so good, isn't it? I mean, look at the trophy in his hand right now. It says it all. Yeah, obviously he's... He should have got it, nah, but listen, nah, I think. Nah, nah. He's the match winner. Um, yeah, listen, he's unbelievable. He's always there. He's always fit. He's always showing up for us. And yeah, he's a great captain and he's pushing us on to hopefully win a few more trophies. We mentioned there, still plenty to play for this season, starting Tuesday. But for now, go and enjoy those celebrations. Well done to the both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sort of sense, don't you, Jamie, that, that that fitness will will define how far they might go in other in other competitions, really. Yeah, and getting players back. International breaks going to come at a good time for them, where they can get some of those injured players. It's obviously Salah, Sobersly. Uh, I noticed Trent was in a knee brace earlier on, so he doesn't like he's going to be back any time. Ravenberg's in a boot after yeah, today. It, it's a walking wounded, but you know these lads are, are, are hopefully from this bit of confidence. I mean, I've only got to be at school in the morning, a lot of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is, it's an, in, an incredible achievement. And everyone's buying into it. And, it, and it, whatever happens, it doesn't change my opinion on Jurgen Klopp. If they go and win four trophies or if it's just this one, it's still an incredible th thing what he's done for this club, this community, the Liverpool fans around the world. He's made them believe again. Do you, th do you think it gives them a platform for the rest of the season? Absolutely. I mean, of, of course, what Jamie's talking about, the injuries are key, but... I think the confidence they'll get from this, knowing that, OK, we've, got, we've had a lot of young boys play today and they've come out and, and put their best foot forward and we've managed to get a result, I think that they're going to gain a huge amount of confidence from this and they'll fancy themselves moving forward. Of course, once the international break comes along, we'll have players back and then it'll be about them performing on the pitch. Uh, Virgil van Dijk said to Emma there, Kevin Kelleher is world-class. He said it before. He was vital for them today. 
It was unbelievable. Um, big, big saves. I think this one was was early on, capitalising on on the. Uh, Sterling was coming in on the back post there. He didn't take his maybe the first time, and then bang, falls to Cole Palmer, who you want it to fall to, and he was just big. He was brave. He was out early. He was quick. Um, absolutely outstanding. This was probably the one where you're thinking Gallagher could you have maybe took it round him but again he came out and was big and you're thinking those messages early on I think it got into Chelsea's head a little bit because it was like wow we, we can't get past him and we're trying everything and it was like ping pong in there and just nothing fell for them and I felt like Chelsea lost their head a little bit in that aspect but he was outstanding. Oh outstanding and you know what that used to be my my goalkeeper I used to do shooting against right um you know like oh yeah come I need a keeper uh, to the goalkeeping coach they used to send Kelleher across. We used to have a bit of banter. I used to give him a bit, you know what I mean? And to see him now... So you're taking credit for it, yeah? I'm absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. But, you know, I, I think when you see a guy who you've seen his ascension, he's, he started out being just a guy, third-string uh, goalkeeper mm. for the team, and now he's in the final starting, been brilliant. Of course, he's got Alisson there. Who's, Did he's, you believe he could a... be this good? Because he loves his trophy, he loves his competition. <sighs> Honestly, Yes. He was a lot smaller then in terms of body. He's thrown yeah. out quite a lot. Mm. His shot stopping's brilliant. Um, he is, he's got a lot more command, command about him now, whereas before you would have thought it was a little bit, you know, a bit, bit frail, a little bit. But now he's filled out. He's got a huge amount of confidence in his own abilities as well. And he made himself so big. What, yeah. what's, what's his character like? Because it takes a, it takes a special kind of mentality, doesn't yeah. it, to accept... That you're not first choice because you've got a wor another world-class goalkeeper, if I follow Virgil van Dijk's thought. You've got Alisson in front of you, a world-class goalkeeper in front of you. So what's his mentality like to be, be able to settle for that but also be able to deliver whenever he's required? It takes a huge amount of um, confidence in yourself, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of belief that when your time comes, preparation as well, ensuring that you're ready when, when called upon. And I think when he's learning and playing with some of the best goalkeepers out there, it gives him the understanding of what it actually takes to be that guy. And then going on the pitch, you've obviously got to do it and perform. Mm. Alexis McAllister just saw him come into shot there. He's had a bad few months, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, World Cup. Trophies winner. just keep Absolutely. coming for it. But I think as well that when you work with elite players, and he's been watching Alisson day in, day out, and how he c comes out in one on one situations, which he's one of the best in the world at, it rubs off on you. And you can see that the way he came out to Conor G Gallagher was Alisson in a lot of respects. And he deserves so much credit because you have to be, as you say, a type of character that's... You have to be resilient because there's some days you're training thinking, well, I'm training for, for what? I'm not going to be playing on Saturday. I'm not going to get a game. I've got one of the best keepers in the world in front of me. So you have to have such a great attitude and be ready for every single occasion. But he deserves it. Uh, Liverpool are enjoying our selfie stick in the middle of their celebrations. Harvey Elliott was in charge of it. Let's get more reaction. Luis Diaz is with Natalie Jed. We're here with one of Liverpool's main players this season, Luis Diaz. We're going to speak to him in Spanish, but hold on a second because I'm going to translate everything right after. Primer, muestra la medalla. Show us the medal. Yeah? That's a gorgeous one. Uh, si puedes hablar un poco de las sensaciones, if he can uh, talk about the, the feelings of overcoming so many challenges in a match, especially from the, the attacking perspective, because it looked like one of those matches where the ball just wouldn't go in. Nos pareció una de aquellos partidos dramáticos que el balón no entraba. Bueno, eh, así como lo, lo dices tú y lo recalcas, Es un partido de, de buenas expectativas, eh, un partido grandioso, eh, un partido grande. Creo que los partidos grandes se juegan de esa manera. Eh, estábamos preparados para, para afrontarlo de la mejor manera. Se hizo bien, eh, se jugó el todo por el todo. Fue muy fuerte, fue muy físico, pero sacamos el resultado. A lo último sabíamos que, que podíamos sacarlo y bueno, gracias a Dios se nos da el triunfo. It was a very tough match, and big matches are played this way. So it was very physical, very tough. He was just telling me that they were very tired at the end. But in the end, they were able to, de to deliver the result, and he knew that they, were, they could make it. And especially from an attacking perspective, because you had different combinations up front today with different players and the youngsters coming as well. So uh, a different challenge for, for you, too, uh, with con las combinaciones diferentes, con los uh, delanteros. 
Bueno, sí, eh, como te dije, preparamos el juego de esa manera. El míster lo preparó muy bien. Creo que salimos al campo demostrando que, que queríamos llevarnos a la final. Eh, lamentablemente tenemos bajas en el equipo, pero lo hemos afrontado bien. El que juega lo hace bien. Tenemos que seguir descansando para lo que se viene, que esto no acaba acá y tenemos un año de, de muchos partidos más. Uh, he said that they have a year with a lot of matches, but they prepared the matches uh, like that, and he knew that there, it was going to be a challenge, but they prepared really well. And finally, for you in particular, how much does this title mean with everything that happened in your life? Your dad is here, tu papá está aquí. Uh, con todo lo que pasó en tu vida, imagino que las sensaciones, las emociones son diferentes. The emotions are very different. Total, total. Muy feliz y agradecido con Dios por, por hoy en día estar levantando esta copa y tener a mi familia acá disfrutando de ella. Eh, muy contento porque mi padre, mi madre estén aquí hoy en día que pasamos un momento, como ya saben, difícil, pero bueno, estamos para afrontar eh, los grandes retos que nos pone la vida y hoy estoy muy contento y muy feliz y agradecido con Dios por el triunfo y por tenerlos. Un abrazo. Y eso hace de todo más especial, sí. Sí, muy, muy, muy especial. Estoy de, demasiado contento, estoy muy agradecido, como te dije, con el equipo, con, con el entrenador, que, que en esos momentos difíciles lo hicieron ver, lo hicieron ver bien, me apoyaron en todo momento y bueno, hoy los tengo acá, tengo que aprovecharlo al máximo y se los dedico a ellos, que son lo más importante para mí. Yeah, he said he dedicates this title to his mom and dad. They're both here, so for everything that they went through, it makes it so much more special to win this title and to be able to celebrate this title with his family. So congratulations, enhorabuena, que disfrute Luis. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias a ti. Gracias. What a great evening. Oh, there's a lot of emotion around here, isn't there, really, in the Liverpool side of things. Look, he had the most shots today, did Luis Diaz. He had the most touches in the opposition box. He never stopped. No, he didn't, and probably the reason why he alluded to at the very end there for his family, you know, what he's been through. But um, you're right, he never stopped running. He was... I thought at the start of the game he was going to be the match winner. With so many of the senior attacking players out that we've mentioned, I thought, right, he's going to be the guy, he's going to be the one that steps up. And some of his decision-making wasn't quite there, but look, they got the result in the end. Let's take a look at the winning goal. We've talked about it. As you were saying, some people say maybe he could have taken the short option before he... Uh, <laughs> well, before I was looking at I said, Dan, you've got to play it short. You've got, you got two, <laughs> got two to be one. Ah, 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 no, there you go. There's, there's Bobby Clark. Bobby Clark, play it to him. Actually, no, let's just put it in the box like that and you get the big man on it. And you can see Disazi there, he's sort of trying to connect with Virgil. He gets he can't quite get there. You can see that he has to sort of make a bit of a detour. Virgil, like, it's a great header, just flicks it there. Yeah, I mean, he's worked his way through and been a little bit cute in how he got to his spot where he was going to connect with the ball. And obviously, Mudrick's none the wiser of what's behind him. He's just watching the ball and thinking he's going to head it. And Virgil's got a good leap, good presence, and the connection on the ball was perfect. And in the back it went. Does Mudrick need... A shout there, or does he just need to show a bit more desire? Well, no, he's in that position because they're doing that part of zonal. De Sassi's obviously marking him there, but I think he's it's difficult because probably me and you can say to that we wouldn't have been strong on set pieces. So, me being in that position, I wouldn't want to be there, but ultimately, that's my zone. I'm there to, to make sure that anything in that near post zone doesn't come in. I think Jamie alluded to earlier, Virgil van Dijk wanted it more than any of those Chelsea players, but. Mudrick in that situation, he's not marking anyone. That's his area. You've got to get your head on it, and he doesn't. And De Sassi just can't get there because it's too much of a big movement for him to get across. I don't want to jump into his nightmare, but even if you look at it, I don't know if we could show it again. When you've got a corner coming in, your body shape, you've got to be looking at the man, you've got to be looking at the ball. Why are you on your toes? Do you want to make sure that you win this header? And just keep an eye on him. Look, he's on his heels, he's not really moving, he's walking there. Then all of a sudden, someone comes across him. And I think you can't wait. You know, you've got to be ready for that. Alan Shearer would always say to me, because he would defend near post, he'd all, he, he, he would always say that if, if the attacker can see my, the whole of my number, then, I, then I'm in trouble on the body, body shape. Wrong, yeah. uh, let's hear from the Liverpool manager. Here's Jurgen Klopp with Emma Saunders. Well, congratulations, you. Jürgen. The smile on your face says it all, but League Cup winners again. What does this one mean? <laughs> <laughs> no other chance. I, what, what, what happened here tonight is absolutely, all this afternoon, absolutely insane. These things are not possible. Besides, um, you have a team, a, a, a squad, 
an academy full of character. It's unbelievable what happened here tonight. I'm so, I'm so, I, I don't feel that often, but I'm so proud that I, that I could be part of that tonight. Wow. How we played, we, uh, the crazy stuff, we deserve it. We deserve it, yes, we had lucky moments, they had lucky moments, that's fine. It was a tough game, 120 minutes, crazy. Um, or 150, roundabout, with all the extra times. Um, and uh, the boys showed up, it was really cool. With Virgil finding the winner and all the kids on the pitch, does it to you feel like almost the perfect conclusion? Yeah, 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 for tonight, definitely. I'm pretty sure <laughs> when we brought on all the kids, the people were thinking, okay, that's it now, they gave up, they have a, a game on Wednesday. It was really not the case. We really thought we need fresh legs. And the fresh legs were fresh, but very young. Um, but they did the job, they did the job. Danzi had the ball on the crossbar, I think. Then the other one, was a bit, I don't know, scrappy ball. He could maybe score from there. And uh, James, Bobby, what they did, it's unbelievable. How have they been able to do that, show up on this kind of occasion in a packed-out Wembley Stadium and, and pull off a result it's like a, that at their age? Yeah, yeah, it's the environment I think we all together created that uh, the boys, and they train now obviously because of our situation already for a pretty long time with us. Um, so they know exactly what they have to do. And they are, they are in training when we have time for 11-11. For um, they are a, a pain, to be honest. They are. And um, so, and that's what you have to be then in, in these moments. And they were today as well. Come on, how they, how they defended it. And, uh, but it's not only them. It's like, how got Harvey Elliott to release 120 minutes? What, what an effort. How all the guys who, what Taru Endo. Oh my God. He walked through the, for the ceremony like the stiffest legs I ever saw. So, yeah, we have to see what the, what's the prices we pay for this game today, but um, you cannot do it differently. You are in the final, you fight with all you have, and then you have a look who is ready for the next game. It's obviously around the corner, which is really crazy, but uh, yeah, somehow there will be a team in a Liverpool shirt. So much praise for your outfield players, rightly so. What about your goalkeeper I'm today? I'm happy with him. I'm very happy with him. He did play a really good game, surprisingly. Oh, come on. Unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. We, we, mentioned, no, we didn't mention Cleve and we didn't mention Connor. <laughs> we took him off because we, we thought we cannot just push him always through. He was so good. But Cleve, what a mature performance. I said it so often. We have the best goal in the world and the best number two in the world. So it's unbelievable how he played. I'm so happy for him as well. Yeah, top game. Another player that didn't make it to the end, Ryan Gravenberg. Uh, what can you tell us there? And uh, uh, what did you think of it at the time? There, was a, there, was a, there were two teams who were fighting extremely hard. The referee was not, was not, uh, didn't have the level of the game. That's how it is. I'm sorry for that. I'm no now make a story of that, but everybody saw that. It was not even a foul. It was, he doesn't even whistle a foul. And then uh, Father Bridge explains to me, yeah, because of that, we cannot give a card because there was a... Oh, good idea. So. These boys, they are, I'm not sure if it's just too much, too quick, whatever for them, but it, it, that, this situation was for me obvious. We saw it, the dog came next to me, or the field came next to me, and saw just a foot stepping on, on the ankle. The ankle, that's what obviously is everything what you need for a card. But I hope it's not that bad. They did an x ray, so it's not broke, but the ligaments got something, and that's how it is, and um, it's all bad. We, we, how I said, um, we have. You asked me about that, so I feel actually really bad, but um, all the rest was brilliant. Yeah. Back to the positives. That is one trophy in the bag in your final season. Still plenty <laughs> of time a, Plenty of time for more, though, Jürgen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't have a team right now for Wednesday when we play Southampton in the FA Cup. So. With the way these players are showing up, though, you must have some belief with the three competitions you remain in. Can you imagine I can them send again? One of them. Tell me if you show me the game. Who came on? And the guys who came on maybe can play again, all the others. It's like tricky, but we will have somehow. Tomorrow they get treatment and then nothing else. And then hopefully we can bring them in a different status. But it's the schedule, I love this country to bits, but the schedule, the Premier League and all the other competitions put in front of us, it's not made for winning a lot. So we won tonight, we should take that, we cherish that, we celebrate that 100%. Our people were fantastic, it was a sensational atmosphere in the stadium. The celebration after the game was top class, loved it. Um, 
finally I found my family in the stands. It took a while. It's pretty big, this, the stadium. Um, and they look pretty happy as well. So that's all perfect. But the rest, give me a few seconds to process how we can step forward from here. Save this moment for now, Jurgen. Yes, there's a game on Tuesday, but well done. Congratulations. We have a game on Tuesday. Well, coming up this week. Oh, Wednesday, hopefully. Wednesday. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> Forget oh, about that okay. for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that nearly, that he nearly, was like that. He was going to start <laughs> massaging his players. <laughs> nearly spoils his day, didn't it? That, no. uh, they do have the FA Cup. But look, as he said in there, just focus on the game that's in front of you, Karen. They're in the oh. final. Worry about what's yeah. to come later, and he will. And that's a lovely shot, too. The, yeah, the club's greatest ever managers hugging each other, Jamie. Yeah, what a shot that is, Kenny. What a player, what a manager. Great human being, too, and Jurgen Klopp. And he's in that bracket now, Jurgen Klopp, without a doubt. You know, how do you, how do you follow him? As I said, you know, you, there's certain managers that have, have, have graced our leagues. And you, know, you think about Alex Ferguson, you think about Arsene Wenger and how difficult it has been to follow that kind of character. And they've, Manchester United have found it virtually impossible. Arsenal, pretty much the same. It, it's not easy. He's got so much passion and you, you just people like that you can't they don't find very often Karen do you no uh, you know at the end there where they're all in that line I was thinking wow like how do you follow that because he's got he has everything he's got mm. the fans he's got the city he's got the community he's got the players he has everything I would be petrified to follow that I don't it would put me off to be honest but but the the person who follows him I heard one of the Anfield rap on the radio just after he announced he was leaving say whoever follows him can't try and emulate it. They don't, they don't want to be Klopp Mark II. They've got to be their own man. You've got to be you, I think, yeah. as a coach. You know, Everybody's got to be their true, authentic self in what, if they want to be somebody who's going to engage with the fans. Klopp's been absolutely magnificent. The next manager who comes in, they're going to want to put their style of play down there. You've got managers which, which we speculate about, you know, Amarim at Lisbon, you've got um, Xabi Alonso, you've got De Zerbi, you've got all these coaches that out there that I'm sure Liverpool would, are going to be doing a vast view of, you know, who can we get that can, can come in and do it. And it's going to be a difficult job. We know that because this, this manager has been special for the football club. Yeah. He's just a one-off. You can't follow him. You're right. I mean, and if, if it were but you to can't be... come in and go, I'm going to copy him. No, you, but they... they, they... But that gives you problems in itself. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Well, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Always be compared. So, yeah. like, that's why I think it's such a bit of a poison chalice from, I, from I, my perspective. I also don't think managers are out there thinking, "Oh, I don't want to be the Liverpool coach." I think this is a job that a lot of managers out there would want, would love to have, because it's a magnificent football club. The fans, the the history behind the team the success that they've had in recent years and previous years. It's the perfect um, location for a manager who wants to, of course, further their career, but it's the timing of it. And, you know, the timing is Jürgen's won a trophy this year. There might be more coming too. So if they come in next season, there's, of course, an expectation there that, yeah. hey, we've got to compete. You know, we're not going to be waiting around. We're used to competing now. So it's going to be interesting. But he's more than a manager as well. You can see he is with what he's like with the players and the culture that he's created. And you felt as well when they lost, like Jordan Henderson, James Milner, how were they going to react because they set such great examples? But you see now Virgil van Dijk is leading in that manner and the manager trusts them so much. But they broke the mould with Jürgen. Forget about it. Forget about what he's, you know, what he's created and what he's like as a person, a human being and the, the passion that he embodies at that football club. You're not going to find anyone quite like him again. But you've just got to find someone that's going to that can create something special. The fans will, the club will always be there, the fans will always be there and the history of that club will never change. But trying to find Jürgen, they had to wait 30 years to find him before. And now they've got to try and find someone that can just, you know, maintain <laughs> They don't want to wait it. that long though, do they? You know what I mean? They don't no, want to wait that did. long. But they did, to win the league, it was, it was mm. him. And the last one to do it was Kenny Dalglish and then you get, you know, Jürgen Klopp to do it. It's going to be incredibly hard. But he's been put, the club is in a good place. The academy's obviously in a great place. You can see what Alex Inglethorpe's done there. It's a, it's a very special football club. Well, you mentioned that. Eight academy graduates picked up a medal today in that Carabao Cup win. And two of them, Connor Bradley and Bobby Clark, are talking with Natalie. Congratulations to the both of you. First, it's a very simple question, but very hard to figure out how are you able to go to a packed Wembley at a cup final and just deliver with the tranquility and the maturity that you guys did? 
Uh, I think it all comes from the gaffer, to be honest, the confidence he puts in us youngsters and, and he just tells us to go out there and enjoy it and, and that's what we try and do and, and we're, so, we're so happy to, to get the win today. You, you started on the bench, Bobby, so, so how, how was it those first few minutes when they, they, they called your name and they gave instructions and you were looking at this, at this packed Wembley? Yeah, it felt surreal obviously when he told us to get ready, get warmed up and then when he called my name said I was going on, yeah, it was an unbelievable feeling. Yeah, they were all talking about how the game was prepared like this. So, how was the build-up? Were you looking forward? Because there was a lot of talk uh, about the players that were missing. Um, yeah, obviously, we were all looking forward to it. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a massive game for us, especially the young ones. But um, obviously, it wasn't it wasn't easy with the amount of injuries we did have. But um, we were just so thankful to get over the line and get the win and get the win for the manager. So, eight players from the academy got a medal today. Is it? Does it feel easier if you have so many of you just supporting each other in an occasion like this? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, when there's a few over there, it makes it much easier. We can bounce off each other and yeah, everyone done great. And there's also uh, the identity that, that Liverpool has throughout the academy. So how much does, ha does this have an effect in an occasion like this? Yeah, it makes it much easier coming into the first team whenever the under-21s and the under-18s all play the same way. So you, you know what you're doing whenever you, you are getting thrown in. So it obviously makes it a lot easier and, and the work of the academy is brilliant. What does Klopp do that is so special in occasions like this? He just fills you with confidence. Obviously, when you're coming on like me today, just gives you freedom, really. Lets you do your thing, yeah. And what about you? Because you've been having such a special season. It's so impressive to do to see everything that you already delivered. Yeah, he's just such a special manager to, to work under, and um, I just need to cherish every moment I do get left with him because obviously he's going in the summer. So yeah, I just want to enjoy every moment with him now and, and try whenever we can for him. And how did you deal with the emotions of, of such a crazy match in the end? <laughs> Extra time and, and the ball just wasn't going in? Oh yeah, it was crazy. It was end to end. Obviously, came on like 70th minute, went extra time. Yeah, it was mad going back and forward. How was it to keep the composure? Yeah, well, thankfully I wasn't on at the end because I don't know if I could have kept my composure. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, the boys done brilliant and, and, and especially the young ones that came on, they, they showed real heart and they always wanted the ball and they always want to try and make something happen. So uh, full credit to the, to the boys. And finally, how special does it feel having having this medal, having this amazing afternoon that you guys had? Yeah, I don't think I can actually put it into words. It's um, it's an incredible feeling, and obviously I've I've supported this club since I was about five years old. So to now win a trophy with them at Wembley, it's um, it's special, and I'm just buzzing. What about you, Bobby? Did you at the start of the competition did you think that you were going to be on the pitch on the final in the, those final minutes? Now wearing this medal? <laughs> Probably not, no, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm buzzing to be here. Obviously got the medal. Yeah, it's unreal. Congratulations to both Thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and we have all said the same thing. God, he looks like his dad. <laughs> uh, when, uh, yeah. when it, um, what seems to run through this, when you hear them, when you hear Klopp talk about it, is, is this issue of character with the young players. Yeah, and I said to you guys then, I was like, for, for two guys that are really, really young, they even interview like really well. There's like a maturity, a respect and like the personality there and obviously you look at the football player in terms of talent and ability but also that personality, that mentality and these youngsters that have come on today and even how they speak, um, Bradley in particular, it, you know, it, it really, really stands out. Well, Alex Inglethorpe, the head of the academy, spoke with Jamie Carragher for the Telegraph week this week and, and, and he said the message to the young players is if you don't get into the first team because of talent, because there are players better than you, then that's fine. But don't not get into the first team because of a lack of character. Yeah, and, and you know the preparation that the academy gives these boys when they get into that first team environment, like you were saying in the interview there, they know what they're expected to do. They know what the manager expects them to do. The manager will put an arm around them and give them confidence in the first team environment as well as the senior players. So I think the, the academy's done an amazing job to get eight boys in there at a club like Liverpool in a final like this. It's It's testament to them for the job they're doing to prepare these players to be what they are today. And it puts them in such a good light as well, Daniel. If you've got a great young kid in the North East and you're looking at thinking, is there a pathway at some clubs mm. to get my boy into the first team? You'll be thinking, well, there certainly is at Liverpool. They give, they give them a but chance. But also, if you're a young... If, good education. If you're an 18-year-old lad there and you see another 18-year-old lad play the week before and then you're on the bench, 
you know you're going to get the same treatment, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And the academy many years ago, when they, they moved away, they took a, they, the, the, the training ground was, was at two different places. I feel it's so important to, to be within touching distance mm -hmm. of the players. Yeah. When I first went to Liverpool as a 17-year-old, we used to train on the same pitches and I used to be able to watch John Barnes train and I was like, God, look at him just in close quarters. You need to see it. Yeah. You need to watch them, how they live their life, what do they eat, what, how do they wear mm. their boots, everything. I just want to you know, be able to see it. And I felt that they lost that to a certain extent, but they've got that back now. You know, being in the same area, the same vicinity, I think is so important because you need to be able to see what players are doing day in, day out and how they live their lives. And if they see you as a kid, they can, and I'm not saying you needed it, but they can keep you in check as well if they think you're doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. Absolutely, and the culture's got to be right. In that interview you talk about, I think Alex Inglethorpe said, we don't want any players turning up with you know, watches and that they yeah. shouldn't be having at that age. A car has to be of a certain type. They don't want players turning up into big fancy cars until they've actually made it. And I think that's where you need the right culture at the club because it needs to be created because... The problem now is, with young players, they earn so much money so quickly. So how do you maintain them that they stay grounded? And they was, and I think he also mentioned if the player wants more money and he wants to go to another club, well, they're at the wrong club in the first place because it all comes to him in the end. The money will come. You need that education to make sure you get on the in the pitch in the first place. As you would expect, it is a uh, very happy Liverpool dressing room. Carabao Cup right in the middle of their dancing. They've got their Champions League winning song on. Virgil takes his time before he gets involved. And this won't do Dua Lipa's downloads any harm whatsoever. <laughs> Don't think they'll remix it with this, though. But it's a contrasting set of emotions on the Chelsea side of things. Maurizio Pochettino going through the ringer, really, this afternoon. And at the end, he looked crushed. He's gathered his thoughts and he's talking with Patrick Davis. Well, Maurizio, I know it will be really painful and raw and emotional right now, but what are your immediate thoughts? Well, I think it's always difficult when you lose a final because you don't have the chances again, uh, you know? Uh, because it's one, one game and it's about to, to win. Uh, we lost in the last uh, the last minute of the of the game and uh, it's yeah, so painful um, but now uh, we only we need to take the positive thing we want to keep going we need to push and to use this type of game to to learn and, and be better and i think uh, only be positive uh, because i think we really compete um, in some period of the game i think we deserve more but uh, if you don't score with the chances that we have, uh, I think five or six big chances when you don't score and it's difficult to win the final. Yeah, is that a big part of the pain this evening that you, you had massive chances? Palmer early on, obviously Sterling had the ball in the net, very tight offside. Conor Gallagher hitting the post, there were plenty more as well. Yes, I've seen, yes, that is the, the uh, why, you know, you, you lose the final because you need to be clinical in front of the goal and you need to score goal. And we concede, and, and of course, uh, to congratulate Liverpool and keep going. I noticed you in extra time urging your team forward more than once. I saw you do that. Did you feel like, like having, after having been the better team at, towards the end of the 90 minutes, in that 30 minute extra time period, your team did shrink back? They did sit back a little bit? But I think we didn't have the, the energy. I think we started to, um, to suffer a little bit, and I think. Uh, <clears throat> Normal. I think it's, uh, we cannot refresh uh, the midfielder, and, and of course, it's true that maybe it's true that we were waiting for the penalty because after all the effort that was massive. Uh, yes, but I think now we can <laughs> talk about many things. But uh, the way that you lose is so painful. But now it's, we need to. To keep going, keep moving. Wednesday we have another another game. In all honesty, does it just feel like a big opportunity missed because of the chances you had, and because of the players Liverpool were missing? Like us, we miss also eight ten players, and I think uh, it was a final, very competitive final in between Chelsea and Liverpool. And look, uh, now it's nothing to say. It's only that they were. Uh, they were uh, they scored and we didn't score.
And, and just lastly, is it a personal disappointment as well? This would have just been hard evidence that your project was on course and a first trophy to show people the club's going in the right direction. Of course, always it's difficult to start a project in the way that we are, we are designing the project. But to arrive to the final and, and be here, I think, was a good achievement for the, for the team. But uh, the problem is when you arrive to the final, it's about to win the final. And that is why we are frustrated. But we need to keep going. The, the team is very young and we need to try next, next time. Thanks, Mauricio. You're welcome. He was a little bit defiant at the end, but would it be an exaggeration to say he looked crushed at the start of that? Yeah, and I said at the... Um... Before when I think went into extra time, I was worried psychologically if they didn't beat Liverpool under Liverpool circumstances, what it would do for the group. But also it looked like to him, it did. He looked absolutely devastated, crushed. And I know he's trying to be positive because when you're doing these interviews, everyone else is listening and you're sending the messages out. So he's like, keep going, keep going. But inside, he'll be absolutely devastated, and that'll be tough to pick that group back up, no matter what he says. To be honest. Just for him, the individual, part of the money they spent, part of the team, part of the set, just for him, this was huge today. Yeah, I think it was. Um, you know, brought into the club, having the club spent a lot of money, and it's got a big final for himself where it would have been his first, you know, trophy in, in English football at least. But I think the opportunity was there for them, and I think they also had the chances on the pitch. So they're probably looking, thinking, it's the one that got away, really, because they, they in my opinion, they, they probably had the better chances, the more clear-cut ones right in front of the keeper. I, t I talked about the average ages of the of the lineups in the yeah. in extra time, and Chelsea's was younger than Liverpool's, but obviously Liverpool had much younger players, and then people like Van Dijk to, to balance that out. Just it, it doesn't alter the fact the fact that they spent a lot of money on them that they're still young and. Bedding in, does it? No, but you can't buy a team. That's the thing. It's very difficult to do that. You say, well, you spend a billion pounds. There you go. The one thing I will question is what Chelsea have tried to do in this process and this project, whatever you want to call it, is they've tried to go in a way that I've never seen it happen in football, where you give players seven-year contracts, like trying to beat FFP. Now, I just try to take myself into like, my mindset as a footballer, and if you were on a seven-year contract, what that straight away does, it just makes you feel so comfortable. You know you're there longer than the manager. There's no real duress on you. The one player I think we could all agree with that works the hardest for Chelsea is, is by far, he's got, I think, 18 months on his left in his contract, is Conor Gallagher. Is that because that's just his nature or is that because he's fighting for a new contract? I don't know. None, you know we don't know and he, he can tell us that. But I don't believe that it's ever worked before. I don't think it'll work again. And trying to beat FFP is not the idea. You need to get the best team of possibly that you can get. And seven-year contracts for me just make players feel too comfortable. They're young men getting paid vast amounts of money. They need something to, to, to go for, something to give them a challenge. It's just something that I'm not comfortable with. Do, do you give any um, credence to his argument as well that, yes, we've talked a lot about the players that Liverpool didn't have available, but he said, you know, they've had a lot of players out injured as well. Yeah, they have had a lot of players out injured, but the ones that probably would have made impact today, Reese James maybe, but you haven't had him majority of the season. I'm trying to think who would really make a gripping difference. And I, I, maybe I can't have that argument today. I'll try and find reasons to agree with Poch, but Liverpool have played with 18-year-olds. And I think the only thing about you can buy all these players, they have brought on talent. Have they really looked into the mentality and does... To get that mentality, do you need more time? But Chelsea isn't a club that have time. You've got rid of all your, your big leaders, your big characters. And in those big moments, the difference today was Virgil van Dijk, who wanted it, who was your senior player. And I don't know, it's it's really tricky for, for Chelsea now. And I, I, I kind of I worry for the group psychologically. And I said that earlier, and I still stand by that now. If that was their biggest chance, they missed it, and they didn't take it. Since he's got a heck of a job to pick the players up and pick himself up ahead of this week in the FA Cup and then the league again next weekend? Well, look, they're going to go back to the drawing board. They'll analyse the game, analyse what they could have done better. Clearly, the opportunities in front of goal, you know, were the, the, the thing that cost them the game, I think. But I think it's about them going on the training pitch. The players have clearly got to work on, on the finishing and whether it is analysing other players or whatever it may be. And obviously, at the end of the season, they've got to identify the right player to buy that's can going to be that centre-forward. Is that the group that, as a centre-forward yourself, 
can they train that or again do they have to go and find someone like do you see if as I'm, a striker that it's there or if I'm Nicholas Jackson now or if I'm you know some of the other players there you've got some of the biggest legends you know Didier Drogba who's a top class you know player try and get in, try and give him a call try and try and have a conversation and Get DVDs, get vid well, maybe not DVDs now, but you know. <laughs> hey, I'm talking about like DVDs, like we're back in the day. Hey, not DVDs. Hey, oh, listen, but you know what the thing is. No, but the problem is, like, I'm dressed old school and you're like, <laughs> no, 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 that's the no, difference. No. So you come but into my world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is, you're right? You've made two I, older men very nah, happy. No, no, because, because when, when, I was, when, I was, when I was younger, I'd look, I'd watch DVDs. I always talked about Ancelotti giving me a DVD on Inzaghi. So what I would say is, the guys are lacking confidence in front of goals. Today was an opportunity for them to win it. They had the chances to do it. So that's the thing they're lacking, really. It's not that they're playing bad. It's not that Poch has had him set up bad or this or that. Poch did all he could do, in my opinion. He gave the, the players a game plan. They had chances to win. They didn't get the job done. But they got, as you say, they've got games coming up, so they've got to prepare for them. That, yeah. that FA Cup game is Leeds on Wednesday night. That's like, Leeds are flying. They've beaten Leicester this weekend in the Champions I mean, that's a, ho that's a horrible game coming it is. up. It, but you don't know... I mean, Leeds right now, I think, in Premier League. They want, they want to get back in that Premier League. So what team they put out, we don't quite know. But it's still... There's not going to be a great atmosphere there. The fans are going to obviously be a bit down. They're not, they're not enjoying what they're seeing right now. You asked me the question before the game. I felt Chelsea had turned the corner after that Aston Villa game, but it, mm. it proved today that they've not quite done that. Um, but they've got to go. They've got to show character now. They've got a lot. They've got World Cup winners in their team. Caicedo is £90 million, pounds, whatever. They've got to just somehow pick themselves up. The manager has to turn into a bit of an actor right now and say, right, we're going to be all right. We can make things happen still. This is, still can be a successful season.